This is the screen capture button. Now, by itself, this button is pretty boring. Sure, you can capture your screen with it, but you can't create videos, technical guides, scrolling screenshots, or enhanced visual communications. If you want to level up your communications and create content that engages, educates, inspires action, and produces results, then you need Snagit. I want you to click on the link in the description below to download a fully functional free trial of Snagit so that you can follow along on this video, The Beginner's Guide to Snagit. Let's dive in. This is virtual assistance. Tutorials, tech support, and troubleshooting in just a few clicks. Thanks for the click. My name is Steven, here to keep you focused, creative, and productive. Now this video is going to be all about the screen capture tool Snagit. Snagit is made by TechSmith, the same company that makes the Camtasia screen recorder and video editor. Now there are some similarities between the two and I'll create a separate video that shows you the similarities and differences between Snagit and Camtasia. But for now, I want you to click that link in the description, download your free copy of Snagit, again fully functional, and follow along with me in this tutorial. Now, if you also want some help with your content creation from planning to production to distribution, I'll put a link in the description below for that as well. So without further ado, let's fire up Snagit and jump right in. When you open Snagit, you'll see a very clean, very easy to use interface. Let's jump right into capturing something. When you click this red capture button, Snagit will show you a pair of crosshairs that'll let you specify the area of the screen that you want to capture. Now you can hover over a window and Snagit will automatically detect the area it thinks you want to capture. In this case, I have two different Google Chrome screens open and if I hover over one versus the other, Snagit detects that area and if I click, it'll capture just that window. I can also hover over the top of the screen where it says full screen here and if I click that, that'll capture everything on the screen that's visible. But for now, I just want to capture the logo you see on the left side of the screen. Once I put my cursor into position, I simply click and hold and then drag my mouse to the ending position. I'll release my mouse button and a second window is going to pop up, letting me specify whether I want to capture an image, a video, or a panoramic capture. We'll get into how to use all three of these throughout the course of this video. But for now, I simply want to capture an image, so I'll click this button here. Snagit will then open the image editor. Let me explain the areas of the image editor that you should be familiar with. The area in the middle here is what's known as the stage, and this is where all the action happens. You're going to spend most of your time in Snagit editing what you see on the stage. A cool feature of the stage is you can click on any of the nodes you see on the corners or on the sides and drag that to crop your image. The pane on the bottom is your capture library, where all your screen captures are saved. Now, there's a ton of different effects and styles that you can add to your image. On the toolbar at the top, you'll see options to add shapes, colors, drawings, and even blurs. You can also erase and magnify parts of your image. If you click this More drop-down arrow, you can see additional features and additional effects that you can add to your screen captures. Let's say I wanted to erase part of my capture. I'll click this Erase tool, then simply click and hold and erase any part of this image that I don't want to appear. Now, if I'm not crazy about that, I can go up to Edit, Undo, and that'll undo the effect that I just added. You can also, again, magnify parts of your image. So if I choose the Magnify tool, and I hover over my image, click, hold, and drag, I then magnify that section of my image. I'm going to do a Control-Z on my Windows keyboard to undo that, Command-Z if you're on a Mac. You can also adjust and fine-tune your effects with the Properties panel over on the right-hand side. Here you can change things like the color, the shape, the line width, etc, etc. The properties are going to be different depending on which tool you choose from up top. You can also choose this Effects button that'll let you quickly add effects to your image. Now, if there's any particular effect that you want me to cover, let me know in the comments below and I'll follow up with a video in the near future. Two of the most important buttons in this interface are the Copy All and the Share buttons that you see up top. If I click Copy All, that's going to copy everything that's on my stage 
in that I can go ahead and paste this image in my Google Doc or my Microsoft Word document. You can also click the Share button in the editor. And this will let you save your image to a file or open it in any one of the listed applications like Microsoft Word, PowerPoint, or even Camtasia. What I want to do now is show you how I like to use Snagit to update a live document. This document here is one of the free guides that I offer over on my website. And I want to show you just how easy it is to use Snagit to make engaging educational content in just a few clicks. Now, as I scroll down this document here, you can see that I have placeholders for where I want my images to go once I make them in Snagit. For this first image, I'm going to switch from the all-in-one tool to the image capture tool. Simply put, this eliminates one of the steps in the capture process that I just showed you. For selection, I'm going to choose Advanced, Freehand, Effects I'll leave to None, and Share I'll leave at None. I'll make sure that the Preview in Editor is turned on, and the rest of these can be turned off. Now, I can hit the red Capture button, or I can hit the Print Screen button on my keyboard. I can then position my cursor for where I want my capture to start, click and hold the mouse, then outline around this logo. Release the mouse, and in the image editor, I want to add a drop shadow. So I'll click this shadow drop down, make sure that it's set to center, and increase the size a little bit from 9 to 15. I'll click Apply, then I'll click Copy All, and in my document, I'll go ahead and I'll right click and paste the image into my document. Next, I want to create a GIF image of the keyword research tool. And for this one, I want to capture the full screen. So I'm going to expand this window over here first. Then I'll head back to Snagit, open up the interface. And instead of image, I'm going to click on this video button on the left hand side. For selection, region is selected and that's what I want. Share, I'll keep it none, and webcam can stay off. I want to make sure that preview in editor and capture cursor are both turned on. And I can leave the rest at their default settings. I'll hit the capture button. Then I'll click this full screen button at the top of the page. The recorder is going to initialize and it's going to load this additional toolbar onto your screen. Once I hit the red button on this toolbar, Snagit is going to count down from three and at that point, anything that's on my screen is going to be recorded. Now, since I don't want to capture this toolbar here, I'm going to click this Minimize button on the far right-hand side. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and perform the action that I want to capture for my image for my document. Give it a few seconds, wait for the page to load. Then I'll reopen the Snagit interface. Click the Stop button to finish the recording. The Snagit image editor is now going to load, but it's turned into the Snagit video editor. So there was a point, if you recall, where that toolbar was on the screen and we had to minimize it. So I want to drag this playhead over to the point where that toolbar disappears. I'll click and drag this green part of the crop tool, release, and then click the cut button. That's going to remove the first part of that video. I'll drag this playhead over to the end. And right there, I'll position it there. I'll drag the red part of the crop tool to the end of the video. Release and click cut. And all I'm left with now is video that will then be turned into a GIF image for my document. We can click the play button to preview. So this looks good. Now I'm ready to add it to my document. To make a GIF, I want to click this GIF button right here. I'll leave the default settings and click Create. Now, depending on the size of your video, it could take a while for Snagit to create this GIF image. The GIF is now ready to be added to my document. I'll click the Share button here, choose File, then select the location where I want to save my GIF image. I already created this folder before the tutorial, and I'll leave the file name just like that, and I'll click Save. Now, I want to add this to my document. I'll go ahead and adjust this window, get my document back on screen, highlight this portion of text. This is where I want my new GIF image to go. Then I'll open up the folder where my image is located and drag that into my document. 
Oh, it didn't quite erase the text, but I can just go ahead and remove that. But we see that I now have a GIF image in my Google Doc. Now I want to create another GIF image to a specific region, so I'll follow the steps more or less in the same order that I just showed you. Let's do it again. I'll open Snagit. I'm still on the video tab here. I'll click capture. Select the region that I want to capture. Hit the record button. Then perform the action that I want to record. Once it's done, I'll click stop. Trim the clip. Click the GIF button. Click Create. Now my GIF is ready to share. I'll click the Share button, choose File, rename the file, and click Save. I'll go ahead and add this image to my document again, similarly to how I did it before. And I've added another GIF to my document. The next thing I want to do is add a panoramic capture to my document. Now this is a very cool feature of Snagit. With the panoramic capture, I can actually capture things that appear below the fold on the screen. So we see here that I'm only seeing a certain portion of the screen, and if I scroll down, there's more to it that I want to capture in my next image. With the panoramic capture, we can capture that information. I'm going to expand the size of this window a little bit so that I'm getting two columns here. Scroll up. I'm going to open up my Snagit interface, choose Image, and for Selection, I'm going to choose Panoramic. The rest of the settings I can leave as they are. I'll choose Capture. I'll select the window that I want to capture this time, so select the Google Chrome window, and that's going to open the Panoramic toolbar here. We want to hit Start to initiate the capture. Now, we want to make sure that this toolbar isn't included in our screen capture, so I'm going to drag this over to my second monitor so it doesn't appear in my final image. I'll click Start. Now, what I want to do is I want to scroll very slowly with my mouse wheel, one pane at a time, and I like to stop so that Snagit actually captures what's on the screen. Once I've reached the bottom of where I want to capture, I'll click Stop on the panoramic toolbar. Snagit will then process the image and load it up in the image editor. I'm going to blow this up full size so you can see the capture. It turned out pretty good. First things first is I'm going to crop the bottom of this capture so I get rid of what I don't want to see. Now with this image, I actually want to use the blur tool that we see up this toolbar up top. So I'm going to click more and click blur. Click and drag over the area that I want to blur in my image and Snagit blurs that section. Now if I want to adjust the intensity, I select that blur box and then adjust this intensity knob over on the left hand side. We're going to go all the way here. I want to do one more crop on the right hand side. Get rid of that scroll. I also want to add some shapes to call out certain sections of this screenshot. So I'm going to click on the shape button and with this red box highlight selected, I'm going to draw two red boxes around the different sides of this image. I want that to be a little bit more thick. So I'm going to change the thickness over here. Oop, making sure that it's selected first. Then adjusting the thickness. And doing the same thing with the second box. Now my image is ready to add to my document. I'm going to click on Copy All up here. Minimize the size of this window. Highlight this text in my document and paste the image into my document. So now we've got a nice tall screenshot. We used the panoramic capture and added some effects to this image. As you can see, this is pretty easy once you get the hang of it. When it's all said and done, I've created a very useful, engaging guide that someone can read and fully comprehend the message that I want to get across, all thanks to Snagit. And that's all there is to it. Now, I want you to take this information, focus, and continue to be productive. 
If this video was helpful to you, please give it a thumbs up. And if you have any questions at all, leave them in the comments below. I'll get back to you as soon as possible. And if you want to keep creating, check out either of the two videos on the screen right now. That's it for this episode. My name is Steven, and this has been Virtual Assistance.